the coolest magician on planet Earth, and I'm about to perform the world's most dangerous television show. If you don't believe me, watch this. here in Hollywood. At night, I don my bulletproof lab coat and rubber underwear and become... Lab Man! Defender of Iron! Now, I don't mind doing my part making the world a safer place, but I will tell you what bugs me about fighting crime. The criminal. That's right. It seems I can't go a day without being kidnapped by some crazy supervillain, brought back to their secret lair and forced to listen as they go, I'm going to take over the world, blah, 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 blah. It's really annoying. But I think I have a solution. In order to save time and just get it over with, I've invited every costumed freak in Hollywood to take their best shot at doing me in right here on this stage tonight. That's right. There they are in the cage, provided by the Hollywood Sanitarium. And to decide who's first, let's spin the wheel of scum and villainy. The wheel of scum and villainy. Dozens of different characters all spin the wheel. Whichever costumed extremist that stops on will challenge me first. Yell out your favorites. It could happen. Who will it be? Oh, no. Not him. How are you? My name is John Suzanuma. I'm attorney for Magic Dave. Before my client proposes his challenge to your life, we would like to clear up a little legal problem that we have. Legal problem? Yes. You see, on your last TV special, you called yourself Rudy Colby, the coolest magician on planet Earth. Yeah, but we... Well, we perhaps kidding. you didn't know this, right? But last week, the International Society of Magicians and Birthday Entertainers awarded Magic Dave this official proclamation declaring him the coolest magician on planet Earth. So, we would appreciate it if you would cease and desist using our trademark title. Look, I don't even like that title, but we did use it first. You were the first? We were the first. Well, okay, this might be a good place for my client to start. Life, music, fans. I'm all over this one. <laughs> Which came first, the chicken or the egg? That mystery has puzzled man for centuries, but tonight, I'm going to attempt to answer that question once and for all. The answer is obvious to me. Rudy Colby. The egg. The egg. Where all life begins. A soft, 
vulnerable inside, protected by a hard outer shell, but fragile nonetheless. There are countless ways to fix an egg. Fried, boiled, poached. I prefer scrambled. Tonight, I'm going to crush Rudy Kobe like an egg. The cinder block of death. The name alone conjures up images of death and cinder blocks. That block is made out of solid concrete. It weighs five tons. That's over 10,000 pounds. The block costs over $2,000 to fabricate. That's over 200,000 pennies, over five tons of copper, or the actual weight of the cinder block itself. Rudy Kobe will be chained to this frying pan, which is made out of solid steel. Steel, often referred to as the metal on which the very spine of America was built. <laughs> Along with plastic. To make things more interesting, you'll be secured inside of this egg which is over eight feet tall. If it were a real egg, it would be a source of protein for over 2,000 people, making an omelet over 50 feet in diameter, or, if hatched, a chicken over 70 feet tall, capable of incredible destruction. Wow. He'll have exactly 30 seconds to escape from the chains and break through the egg before this waffle iron burns through this rope and five tons of crushing concrete are released. The cinder block of death is without a doubt the biggest, most dangerous illusion ever attempted in the history of magic, and certainly one of the heaviest. If he escapes in time, he is officially the coolest magician on earth. I don't care about being cool. If he doesn't escape in time, he'll be the flattest magician on earth. Okay, tie him up. Joining us now are three distinguished members of the Los Angeles Police Department. Officer. You've examined all of the locks and handcuffs we'll be using tonight. All the locks were thoroughly examined and sealed before the show. And Rudy has been thoroughly searched. He's not carrying any lock picks or keys. All of Rudy's body cavities were also thoroughly examined and sealed before the show. Thank you. We also have a distinguished member of the Los Angeles hatchery, Mr. Norman Barney. Thank you. Mr. Barney, have you examined the egg? Yes, I've looked it all over. And as an expert on eggs, have you found it to be a perfectly normal, unbroken, eight-foot-tall egg? Yes, except for the fact that it's not really an egg. <laughs> it's uh, eight feet tall and entirely a fiberglass. I'd say that it's just about as normal as any egg you might find at the grocery store. Thank you. Thank you. You folks at home might want to take this last breath of air with Rudy and hold it as long as you can. It will help you imagine what he's going through inside. Remember... There's absolutely no air inside of an egg. That's absolutely true. Our camera, this shot, will never cut away. No camera tricks or video edits, just one continuous shot. And besides, we can only afford one camera. That giant cinder block was expensive. I have to make a serious announcement to the kids watching at home. Even if your parents are really wealthy and you can convince them to construct this exact death trap concrete cinder blocks and giant eggs in your backyard. You shouldn't limit yourself to just 30 seconds to escape. We're pushing it a little here because television airtime is so precious. The timer started. It cannot be stopped. Those waffle irons cannot be reopened. You know, when I was a little kid growing up in New Jersey, we didn't have eggs. You see, my dad had really high cholesterol and a family doctor wouldn't allow it. Ever since then, I've always waited for the day when clogged arteries couldn't stop my dreams. Tonight, I'm going to have my egg and beat it too. Welcome back. 
Right now, I'm going to teach you a secret, disgusting trick that you can use to shock your friends and convince them that you are a complete psycho. It's called the Fork Gag. Imagine you're at a restaurant with your friends. You say, you know, I think, I think I have something in my eye. Let me see if I can get it out. <laughs> the show's got it all, doesn't it? Now, there are two very important things to remember if you're going to do the fork gag. First of all, make sure before you begin that you have a coffee creamer from the restaurant in your hand. And make sure, it's a safety tip, make sure when you stab the fork in your hand that you stab the creamer and not your eye. If you have no idea how far to stab, please use a spoon. You know, I've met a lot of psychos during my career, but none of them compared to the nutcase you're about to meet. This girl is crazy, and bear in mind that what you're going to see is real. It's one of the most dangerous escapes ever attempted in the history of magic. But for the record, the worst part about this was not getting buried by two tons of sand. It was listening to this girl's stupid puns. The hourglass, that's a good one! Yeah. See, it's almost over full-time pieces part-time. She used her spare time to become a small-time criminal, and now she's serving hard time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Hourglass! Long time no see. I've been waiting for this moment, watching the clock, counting the seconds, and I have just one thing to say. Your, Your time, time is, is up. up. You say that every time. But those are just for the moment threats. This time, I'm going to clean your box. Your puns are very cute, Hourglass. I guess they're just second nature to you. But we've only got so much time, so take your best shot. First, my henchmen are going to bind you in chains. These time-honored restraints have been provided by the Los Angeles Police Department. In fact, it seems like old times, since these are the very same chains they used on me when they brought me to the Hollywood Sanitarium. Why was I ticked off, forced to wear second-hand prison clothes? I spent months fighting my time and planning my revenge until this, my finest hour. Here's my challenge to you, lab man. Escape from these restraints if you can. No problem. What's the catch? You only have two minutes to escape. And to make sure you don't go into overtime, I have this. The Hourglass of Death! Bye-bye time. Okay, but answer one question. What is this stupid hang-up with time? Well, maybe this will turn back the clock. You! No, wait! Time out! Time out! Time out! You see, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rudy's ex-girlfriend, and we broke up because he was always rushing me. Hurry up! We have to leave. We'll be late for the science symposium. Like the cure for cancer couldn't wait. He just didn't respect the fact that I needed more time to be glamorous than anyone else on the planet. I mean, what's more important, fulfilling commitments or looking good? The hourglass is made from a single sheet of Lexan plastic. It's bulletproof, scratch resistant, and they're waterproof to a depth of 2,000 feet. All of the best watch companies are using this stuff. By the way, that's not ordinary sand. It's quartz, accurate to one ten thousandth of a second. All of the best watch companies are using that, too. Keep on ticking. Start the clock, boys. The moment of truth is almost upon us. Can Rudy Kobe survive the test of time? Or is he just a second-rate superhero who's going to have to settle to being second best to me? I know I shouldn't tease you 
while you're having such a rough time. But seeing you like this is a laugh a minute. I guess relationships can be more rewarding the second time around. straight or I should get out of your life. Well, I have a counter offer for you. You can take back everything you said about me not caring about anybody but myself or you can become a fossil. <laughs> oh, don't write yourself into an answer. Take your time. <laughs> Sometime. Your history. Okay, we'll be right back. And when we do, I can promise a good time will be had by all. Man, I gotta get the sand out of my shorts. Coming up, Ruby will make this armored truck disappear and perform a backbreaking Houdini escape. very simple once you know the secret. Now, I was really lucky because when I was very young, I learned from an expert. That's right. My next door neighbor worked for the government <laughs> as a covert operations expert or spy. I learned all my life-saving escape techniques. So without further ado, the person who taught me everything I know, Grandma Strawberry! <laughs> Grandmother, and I doubt her name is. Touch me. Okay, our Grandma Noah. Oh no. Touch me, Rudy. Touch me. Uh, Grandma, how could I possibly catch Ooh. you? You're going so fast. Ooh, You're a blur, Grandma. You're Touch a blur. Me. Ooh. Ooh, you caught me. Okay. Now, don't be fooled by appearances. She is the Jedi Master of Rudy. Escape. Horsey. No way. No way. No way. If I do it, if I do it, will you just do the escape? Okay, this is really sick. Okay, I'm glad you like the twisted stuff. Okay. Grandma and I are going to perform two of Houdini's favorite escapes. I am going to escape from this straitjacket. And Grandma will escape from 100 feet of rope. Now, I need two strong volunteers from the audience to help me out. And uh, it could be anybody, but it's not going to be anybody. It's going to be, yeah, you'd be great. And you. Give me a nice round of applause for the guard. Grandma Strawberry. <laughs> now, Tom, Tom, here's the idea. This is 100 feet of rope. You just tie Grandma to the chair any way you want. But this will be a contest.
contest, so do it really, really tight. Okay? okay. No ropes around the neck. If she blacks out, the show slows way down. Okay? okay. Tie her really tight. Now, if she makes any noises like she's hurting, she's Ooh. just kidding. Okay? So tie her really tight. And what is your name? Mindy. Mindy! Yeah. Mindy. This is a regulation straitjacket. It's made out of canvas, and it has leather buckles, and you're going to be putting me in it. Okay? okay. Ooh, just to be in really fast, I'll just put this on right like... Perfect. Now... Tie her really tight. Tighter, tighter. Okay. Now, now I should explain this is actually a contest. This is how we build up speed for the other escapes we do. And I'm going to explain how it's done as I go through it. Okay, nice and tight? Tighter. Perfect. Yeah, really tight, really tight. Um, okay. Now, I'll take my arms and I'm going to cross them just like this. You'll notice they're sewn inside. And Mindy, as tight as you want, just strap it in the back. Really tight. Now, it's very important that Grandma win tonight because she has never won this contest before. I never. win. I win. Woo -hoo. She's completely out of her mind. Crotch okay, strap. Mindy? Okay, Crotch we're almost right. I'm Crotch sorry. Strap. Crotch strap. Woo oh, you're right. There is, there is one more strap, Mindy. Just reach between there. It's, it's as bad for me as it is for you. Just reach between. Just, just reach. Grab that strap, Mindy. Got it? Okay? Thank you. Now, Mindy, gently. Tighter. Gently. Tighter. Tighter. <laughs> Okay, tighter. Do it again. Funny joke. Yeah, thanks, Grandma. Okay. All right. All done, Tom? Yes. Okay, give our volunteers a round of applause because we can. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Now, just like we did with the last escape, we're going to limit this contest to exactly two minutes. That is the internationally respected amount of time supervillains give you to escape. And so I know it's exactly two minutes. My assistant, Nikki Terminator, will play a song. Nikki Terminator, yeah! Okay, Grandma, are you ready? Okay, Grandma, no rules. Last one out is a rotten egg. Do it, Nikki! like that. Well, I do it with another amazing invention from Labco. Watch this. Are you a wimp? If normal workouts have got you down, have we got news for you. Introducing Labco's Atomizer. It's the all-in-one exercise machine that makes a complicated workout as easy as falling downstairs. A good workout begins with the basics. Weight training. And remember, if it's too heavy to lift, it's not heavy enough. Phase two 
is stretching, an important part of every workout. But don't stretch until it hurts. Stretch until it really hurts. Phase three of your workout begins when your muscles just can't do any more. So let machinery do the work for you. After all, this is the 90s. Resistance training is the current rage. So in phase four, the atomizer allows you to become your own worst enemy. It may be impossible to lift yourself off the ground, but that's no reason not to try. Why let a little thing like gravity keep you down? And when you think it's time to reward your efforts, let the atomizers, phase five, scalding hot, fat burning, steam bath, drain every last bit of your energy. And hey, we're looking good. It looks big so you don't have to. Next, the spinning hipsatron wheel brings you into the act. And Rudy defies a tank of man-eating piranha. Welcome back. We're backstage here at Universal Studios Hollywood, where in just a moment, you are going to participate in an illusion with me right from the comfort of your living room. It sounds impossible, but trust me, on our last TV special using this device, the Hypnotron 2000, we did an amazing illusion, not inside the television set, but out there in your home. It seemed impossible, but we got thousands of letters. People just can't get enough of the Hypnotron 2000. They want to tape it and show it to their friends at parties. They, they did tape it, and they wore out their VCRs from showing it again and again and again. Well, we decided to do it one more time, but with a different demonstration. Now, you have to listen to my instructions, but trust me, it's really freaky. Come close to the TV set. The closer you get, the better this is going to be. This is my assistant, Adam. He's holding an unretouched photograph of a blazing fireplace. Now, it's not a video screen or a projection. It's just a cheap cardboard photo of a bunch of fire. Now, Adam, for the fun. The Hypnotron 2000. What I need you to do is to stare right at the center for about 15 seconds and listen to the sound of my voice. Don't take your eyes off the screen. In just a moment, I'm going to make you believe that photo has come to life. Everyone stare at the center. Don't look away and don't pass out. Get ready when I tell you to. I want you to look at the photo. Ready? Look at the photograph. The flames actually look like they're moving. Ooh, scary. Doesn't that look real? I'm getting sweaty just looking at it, but it's just a photograph. There's no real fire at all. Look, no screen. It looks pretty real. Yeah, well, that's the idea. But it's not dangerous at all, and the effects will wear off in just a minute. Now. We're going to do it again, but this time we're going to do the magic in your living room. I don't think that's such a good idea. No, 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 this is really, really cool. Wow. And we're not going to use the photograph. This time we're going to use your body. Oh, no, no. Okay, Adam, no, so let's spin the wheel. Everyone stare at the center of the wheel. Don't look away. In a few seconds, you'll see something truly incredible. This time when I tell you, I want you to look at the back of your own hand. And remember, don't be frightened by what you see. Ready? Look at the back of your own hand. The skin actually looks like it's moving on the back of your hand. Pretty cool, Adam. Much more relaxing. You know, I could use a day at the beach after that last experience. One very important thing to remember while watching this show, if something looks dangerous, it's because it really is. I mean, if you see me jumping out of a plane or just getting kicked where it hurts, it's really me and it's really risky. Even the simplest little thing can turn into a huge challenge. For example, I picked up these little pets during one of my most deadly encounters. They look like cute, harmless little fish, but they're not. These are South American piranhas. They're always mean, and they're always hungry. And on the night I found them, I was the fish food. Hey, boys. It started off like any other night, until the lounge lizard decided to hit me over the head with a chair. 
And I'm not talking about Bill Murray. I'm talking about a seven foot, 300 pound reptile with the personality of a python and the voice of Little Richard. Thank you! You are beautiful! Woo! Shut up! Welcome to the Roy's Kiki Lounge. I am Johnny Gecko, the world's greatest entertainer and the original supervillain. Royal Tiki Lounge? Looks like the Beetlejuice stage at Universal. Okay! We're going to bring it on down for just a minute because I've got a very special guest. The man who made me what I am today because of an unfortunate laboratory accident. Lab Man! Lab Man, ladies and gentlemen! Lab Man! Give it up for him! Lab Man! And I've got a very special way of saying thank you for all that he's done for me. No, I could have buried him inside a giant hourglass. Really original. I even thought of throwing him into a blender and making him into a human milkshake. But I wanted to do something that would really hurt Lab Man. So I'm going to let you in on a dirty little secret. Hey. Even though he calls himself the coolest magic boy on the planet, Rudy's greatest fear is doing anything that looks like a normal magic trick. That's right. Isn't that crazy? So my challenge doesn't involve maiming or killing. I just want Rudy to show me a little card trick. No! Card trick! Card trick! Card trick! Let's do the giant blender thing. Anything but that, please! <laughs> Shut up! My beautiful assistant Molly has a deck of cards for you. Direct from the blackjack table of Las Vegas. <laughs> parties when we were just little cat poles. Woo! Yes! Good stuff! I just love those card fans. Now, Molly, listen, as Rudy says the five sweet little words, he swore he'll never say again. Pick a card, any card. Yes! Do it, Magic Boy! Remember your card. Good golly, Miss Molly! Don't forget that card! Put your card back. I'll shuffle the cards and... No, this is sick. No, this is show business. Here's the deal. If you find her card, i let you go back to your boring little life. But if you don't, I have this. A 10-year contract for you to open for me in Las Vegas. You cold-blooded snake. First of all, we got to get you something to wear. You'll never make it in Las Vegas looking like you should be cleaning somebody's bedpan. Oh, Rudy, you look pretty, almost as pretty as me. Yeah, nice. Plus, we got to give you a gimmick. Everybody's doing card tricks nowadays, so we got to make it look a little more difficult. So tonight, you'll be finding Molly's card by walking this tightrope. And you'll be performing this dangerous feat without a net. Unfortunately, Annette couldn't be here with us tonight. <laughs> Shut up. I know it doesn't look dangerous with that cute little swimming pool to break your fall, but we've taken care of that by filling it with hundreds of man-eating piranhas. You know how they love wild animals in Las Vegas. Rudy, Rudy, this is your chance to make it to the big time. Flash your clothes, wild animals, and lots of light. This is showbiz. Don't you just love it? As he takes one small step for man and one giant meal for fish kind.
a new destiny. Two shows a night, seven days a week in Las Vegas. What? Two shows a night? What? <laughs> continues from Universal Studios Hollywood when we return. Thank you. This is actually my favorite part of the show. We're going to answer one of our viewer letters. Warning, the lab code security perimeter has been breached in Sector 4. What? It's the Cheese Gang, Grandma, to the Labmobile! Let's go, Grandma. And don't forget to fasten your seatbelt. They went that way. The Cheese Gang had escaped from their cell, and it was our job to catch the least tasteful villains in all of Hollywood and put them back in the cooler. There's nothing worse than cheese gone bad.
Okay, Grandma. Take him in. You may wonder how we find a parking space big enough for the lab mobile. Well, the truth is, it's the world's most versatile vehicle. It's not just a full-size, full-featured luxury criminal catcher. It's also a compact that can fit in a box as small as, well, I'll show you. Adam, can help Adam? Okay, I missed. Yes. Okay, Adam. Okay, let's do it, Adam. Ready?